Johnson is one of the great figures of the 18th century. He was a big six foot tall man who was described as both repulsive and intimidating and allegedly he could frighten small children just by walking down the street. He also ranks amongst Shakespeare, Dickens and Chaucer in terms of influence on the English language. In 1737, having failed as a schoolmaster thanks to his pupils not paying their fees, he left his wife Elizabeth behind in Lichfield and with one of his pupils, David Garrick, headed for London to seek his fortune. It's also been suggested that he was going to London to escape his wife and his mother, the latter of which I can completely sympathise with. Whilst David Garrick is not unknown today, he's regarded as one of Britain's greatest theatre actors. He's best known for playing Richard III. Now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by this. Wait, it's October. Winter is coming. Whilst David Garrick is not unknown today, he's regarded as one of Britain's greatest theatre actors. His fame is pitiful when compared with the man he travelled to London with. In London, Dr Samuel Johnson would become immortalised. Dr Johnson is known today as the man who wrote the dictionary, but oh, he was so much more than that. He was a poet, a writer, a playwright. He was a cat lover. He was into BDSM. He was also a Jacobite. See the guy behind me, Bonnie Prince Charlie. Well, it's debatable that he was full on Jacobite but he was quite an interesting character was Dr J. And nestled here amongst the glass towers and absolute bankers of the city and the lawyers there is a remarkable survival. Dr. Johnson's house, the place where he wrote that famous dictionary. I feel like he's just about to walk through the room. About to come in at any moment. Who the devil are you, sir? What are you doing in my house? Get out, you common little urchin. He does seem like a man after my own heart, though. Just reading that he loved reading. And he used to just 
pile up books and just mistreat them and oh this is going to annoy booktube this is definitely going to annoy booktube uh puts his teacups on them he's definitely a man of my own heart there's a fantastic bit of architectural design here these walls with doors in them swing around so essentially shutting that room off there and that room off there and turning this where I'm stood into sort of a hallway and creating like depending on your mood either a big space for entertaining or a little more intimate space for serving tea which the renowned green box Dr Johnson was very fond of and who can blame him okay I really need to read the tour through the Hebrides don't I because apparently he visited Flora MacDonald who helped Bonnie Prince Charlie escape and as I think I said at the beginning of this he was a Jacobite sympathizer <laughs> interesting this is the room where it happened the room where it happened, the room where it happened, the room where it happened I don't mean Alexander Hamilton, I mean the dictionary this dictionary before me Remarkable. Just reading this on the table about um, the women he loved. His wife, Elizabeth. Uh, Anna Williams. Elizabeth Carter. Hannah Moore. Doesn't mention her hair, but Mrs. Frail. They were all wealthy and well-educated. He was a money chaser, wasn't he? He was a money chaser. The more you find out about him, the more I love him. This is her, Mrs. Freckle. Dr. Johnson's close companion. And by close, I mean he was probably the father of at least one of her children, if not more. They had a falling out later in life because she married a guy called Piazzi. Uh, an Italian music teacher, according to that. And she was no longer respectable. This is Dr. Johnson's cat, Hodge. The story goes that, well, he would feed the cat oysters because oysters. 1750s cheap not to the expensive delicacy they are today so he'd go out and he'd buy the cat some oysters and he would never let his servant do this because he thought that was too demeaning for the servant so he went and did it himself what a lovely man and then you realise Grumbly guts, and he was into BDSM. So, Dr. Johnson died in December 1784 at the ripe old age of 75. He was buried in Westminster Abbey, next to the man he arrived in London with all those years ago, David Garrick, and right in front of another of the great men of English literature, Geoffrey Chaucer. He was, by this point, perhaps the most famous writer in the country. He was immortal. He was going to be remembered forever as the man who wrote the dictionary. I've only scratched the surface here, but he was so so much more than that. He was, perhaps, maybe, one of the most fascinating people who ever lived. Okay, Jim. 
Why did you uh, film the last bit in this um, basement? The answer is dickheads. Dickheads and loud music, which... You couldn't make music that loud in the 18th century. Wish I was there instead. It might also be easier to get this published. My brand new Past Force magazine, which is available for free now online. And hey, look, it's got a, a cool picture of Henry VIII on a wrecking ball on it. It's full of articles, essays, poems, news, reviews. It's... if you liked this video, if you like the Past Force style, you're gonna love the magazine. So check it out by clicking the link in the description below, and I will see you with whatever comes next.